Thank you for joining the Thursday edition of Journalist Hangout. I'm Ayodili Uzubakun. Today on the program, activist lawyer Femi Falano says NNPC GMD violated NNPC Act in the award of $25 billion contracts. Federal government files charges against Senator Hama Misao. And later on the program, aid workers flee Goza town after Boko Haram attack. I'll be hanging out with Baba Jide Koladi Otitoju, Sam Ibemere, and Emeka Madunagu. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Before we start today's discussion, let's quickly take you back to yesterday's show. One of our viewers called, called in and said something we find quite interesting. Listen to this. I really appreciate your program. And uh, as I'm talking to you from now, we have a few centers showing your program every evening. Mm -hmm. uh, center. You have a viewing center like the for the program. Yeah. Taju, yes. you have yes. a viewing center. Yeah, exactly. Do you collect yes. money from people to watch our program? Yes, exactly. Yes. 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 That's the kind of feedback we get across the country, and it makes um, you know it, it, it makes the burden on uh, people like us every day. Babajide, we know those who call. We know the people that we, we get feedback from, and the only thing on us is just that we have to strive to make it better. Jide. Yes, um, uh, nothing validates a program like ours uh, better than the kind of uh, uh, comment by Tajuddin. You know, if you say this on your own to people, they may not believe you. Uh, before the election, Shwebu, right? Nora Shwebu Shwebu. in Kano, Kano States. Nora Shwebu used to work in a bank, and then he set up a viewing center, and every day, he was making 2,000 Naira, you know, every day from people who, who were coming to watch. Journalist at that, that time, at that time, the program was known as E15. E15. I heard of you that know? 2015 election. So people were coming, they wanted to be informed about the election. Uh, they found our predictions always, you know, coming through. And they were paying to watch us. I've mm -hmm. told people that some people were paying to watch journalists and God. It, it sounded like a fairy tale. <laughs> now someone has called him on his own to say, making, I make money, money, you know, because I don't know any other program in this country. Because this is not, uh, this is not a uh, football program, for example. It's, it's not, not a football match. match. It's not Messi and Ronaldo <laughs> uh, uh, Set up. Uh, uh, playing uh, against one another mm. uh, in, the, in, the, in, in Spain. We have people come in, spend their money just to watch. So, for people to pay money to watch journalists hang out shows that the program is bigger than many of us, especially around here. See it, and it imposes that burden on us to strive to be better than we are now. It, it shows clearly that Nigerians know the people who tell them the truth, and they believe that whatever we say here, we make quarrel with ourselves here, they have that faith in us. So much faith in us to want to pay to watch us every day, you know, just do our stuff. Followership of not is incredible. Yeah. Wow. Follow, yeah, yeah, the the followership of yeah. not is yeah. incredible. TVC is number one in Nigeria. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. <laughs> when the, the uh, day before yesterday, I think the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, one of my friends, the, the close aide to the uh, first lady, actually said, uh, the, after the program, she actually commended the edition we did, saluting our courage on this um, General Hospital, uh, uh, Asorok, Asorok Medical, Medical Center. So, so to show you the profile of those uh, watching. I've always said it that the first family, yeah. not just, you see, the, the mm -hmm. Vice President himself called in on the program mm -hmm. and said, I watch you people. Then I the watch wife. you people, mm -hmm. and I you you I watch you closely. You, Abajide, <laughs> said it, and I've also testified. I've told Nigerians that I was in Abuja, and the director of DSS, Lawa Daura, came to me and shook my hand vigorously. You are doing a good job. That program is very good. So 
when people like that, and we criticize him here. Honestly. We criticize him all the time. Yesterday. But he still doesn't stop them from realizing that this yeah. is a good program. Yes. You know, from time to time, you will criticize people, but then people... See the essence of the program. You know, people realize that mm. you are saying the truth, and for that, they, are, they, 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 they will be grateful to you. Then the, the, the day the vice president called, he was in his office, and they, we, he took the snapshots. That, that's the, that's the, the vice, vice president, president watching, of, journalists uh, and the, uh, watching journalists hang out from his uh, uh, office. And responding to, <laughs> to our... That they were, <laughs> were about criticizing no, him we, for... We had become <laughs> criticizing <laughs> him. <laughs> you know, I said it at that time that Nigerians expect Oshibajo to become an activist in government. Yes. We didn't know he was watching. So you can see the sets, you can see uh, our, our sets there, and that's the office of the vice president. I think that's the Laulu, Laulu beside him. Laulu, that's uh, that's uh, Laulu Akonde, <laughs> his media aide, and the vice president was actually calling into uh, the program. Mm. So whatever I, we say. I think, <laughs> I think that the experience of yesterday further validates, validates you know, the recent award that you know, the, uh, the program A brown ends. groundbreaking yeah, program. It, it of shows the that we were really very deserving of that award. I and, think uh, it's congratulations to the house. Mm. And it's not only in the north that this is happening. It's Everywhere. not only in the north that this is Every, happening. Everywhere. Wherever we go, we are appreciated. People tell you, oh, where is uh, so-so person? Where is, uh, we mention our names. People are already <laughs> very, very familiar. One by one, program. one by one. All right, Brilliant. moving on to business. It is wise to stop digging when one is in a hole. But this simple logic seems to elude the group managing director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, Mekanti Baru. Each defense he puts forward against the petition of his boss, Ibe Kachiku, seems to compound an already poorly managed situation. Baru has been quoted as saying that he has the powers to award contracts without involving the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources and the board of NNPC. Though this sounds pleasing to Baru's logic, a right activist and senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano, says it is illegal and a violation of the NNPC Act. Act. Won't it be honorable for Baru to stop digging at this point in time? Um, we still spoke about him yes, uh, this morning. Um, Mekanti is the shop owner. Yes. According to you yesterday. Well, that's <laughs> the meaning of uh, Mekanti <laughs> in Ausa. Is shop owner. Oh, no. okay. But um, Mekanti Baru actually wants to present himself as the owner of, NMPC. Owner of NMPC. Because when you come out and say you can take decisions without a recourse to your boss, without a recourse to the board of the NMPC, then you become May NMPC. You are no longer <laughs> Mekanti. You are May NMPC. That is what you want to turn yourself to. But we, can, we are seeing now that despite the efforts of some people to put a spin on what is happening, despite the efforts, you can see that it's one side just talking, it's one side. Nearly every day, uh, Ugamadu has no other job beyond just talking about this matter. And the, the, the minister is not talking. Mm. So you can see the side that is extremely desperate. You can see the side that is bent on deceiving Nigerians. You can see the side that wants Nigerians to think that what it has done is right. But now, Femi Falano, in just three legal arguments, blew Baru's uh, um, explanation out of water. Now look at, he cited section 6C yeah. of the NMPC yeah. Act, mm. which vests the board of the NMPC with uh, the, the exclusive power, and I quote, the exclusive power to enter into contracts in pa on partnerships, partnerships with any company, firm, or person which is the, in the opinion of the corporation will facilitate the discharge of the said duties under the NMPC Act. Mm. So, if Baru says that he does not need the NMPC board, then he's going against the this law. Act. Because Section 6C of the NMPC Act mm. vests the NMPC board with the power to enter into contracts on behalf of the company. That is not all. Fallon also says that the public procurement has states that competent authorities that have the final say in the award of contracts and disposal of public assets under the 
current political dispensation are the BP, that's Bureau of Public uh, yeah. Enterprises, yeah. and the National Council of Public Procurement, yeah. NCPP. Uh, his, uh, his argument is that since neither of these two agencies is headed by the president, Baru's decision to run to the president or the, the acting president to have them validate yes. the contract that is sat over an internal tenders board, mm. a contract that he generated on his own, originated, and then sat over an internal tenders board to have that co the contract approved is even illegal. Mm. So, Palano's argument is that under our law, since 2007, the power to approve contracts have even been taken away from the president. That's correct. That power has been vested in the NCPP. Mm. So, we are in a nation where people enjoy impunity. Mm. So, that means that every time a president awards a contract without a recourse to the NCPP, mm. he has done something saying. illegal. So that's what, that's what Falano is saying. And Falano also says something that we talked about here because all of the arguments of May County uh, is just hanged on the issue of the transactions, the money, and all that. He, he refused to talk about appointments. The, appointments, the, appointments. the appointments that he made yes. that Kachiku also talked about. So when people tell me, because I've seen they've been banding uh, the tweet that Laulu Akonde. Uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, they uh, uh, posted. That tweet does not tell us the exact oh. amount yes. of, of the contracts, okay. I mean, in terms of the money, mm. the monetary value of mm. the, con uh, the joint venture contract that the uh, acting president. presidents yeah. allegedly approved. Mm. Not, they, they are silent on the, so, the, mm. the song. Now, what he is saying is that he is silent on who approved the appointments that everyone is saying is loopsided. So, mm. did, because a lot, these things happened when Buhari was away. So, did Anoshibajo, that we all know him for fairness, did he also approve those appointments mm. that tend to make people think that we, we do not belong to one country? No, only Sagbakuba has even gone to court. Gone to court so, so because of this thing. You know what Falano is saying now is that the, if the president does not inaugurate the NCPP, people can go to court and have contracts oh. approved by the president invalidated. Uh, invalidated. Because Correct. you see, it's because we do not test our laws Correct. that a lot of yeah. these things. Before yeah. now, before now, I'm sure you remember, before now, the, we were not taking a service chiefs before the National Assembly yes. to have them uh, screened Screen. mm. and then uh, confirmed. Yes. Mm. But it took I to go to court. Yes. And when, when uh, uh, he went to court, mm. he got the courts have found that it, mm. it is the National Assembly that should approve the appointment of service, of, of service chiefs. chiefs. Yes. So the fact that people Kiyamu are getting this. away mm. with uh, some illegalities does not mean that those does illegalities right. have become legal. Yeah. Okay, let me t quickly take my first breather. That journalist, Anga, we're reaching you live from Lagos, Nigeria, and headquarters here. And Sam, when you look at this development and the way you've seen it, if I, I said it when GD was making an analysis, I said that Ulisak Bakakoba has gone to court to go and even argue about the composition of NNPC board. So this is, thing is now bringing to force so many other things we've been look, overlooking before. Yes, you are indeed, you are indeed correct. But well, before I make you know further contribution, I'd like to add to what Babaji you know um, had said in reference to um, the position that was put out there by the very erudite uh, senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falana. He did say in in his position paper that the NCPP, that's the National Council on Council on of Public, uh, pro procurement. Pro Public procurement, procurement mm. is supposed to be presided over by the Minister of Finance. Yes. I, I thought that we should, we should get that very clear. But having said that, um, I've always been a, st a stickler for constitutionalism. I've always made that point that whatever we do in this part of the world, we should insist that it tallies absolutely with the laws of the land. So 
the likes of Agbakoba who have decided to go to court to test you know, the integrity of some of the policies that have been put out there is absolutely correct. And we would want to encourage everyone who feels very aggrieved about policy directions that don't seem to be very clear to go to the courts and test the law. That's the, that's the only way this country can make progress. great progress. So uh, one would want to commend Agbakoba, commend Falana for, for, the, for, the, for their initiatives. Because there's a lot shrouded in secrecy. There's a lot shrouded in secrecy. And the very sad thing is that this is a government that has promised change. Nigerians indeed want to see change. It, but it would appear to me that those who were behind the NNPC Act unwittingly or deliberately resolved to vest so much power in the office of the president. And I don't think that you know, um, behooves um, is the office of the president of uh, the GMD? No, both, no. The G, both, no. the GMD, no. both the GMD, both the GMD, and the office of the president. Because no, if they no, follow the it, it NPC Act, oh. as Fred Valano yeah. explained, mm. and the NCPP, if we allow the NCPP to work, yes. the president mm. does not have has, those, those powers. No, but what, those powers mm. that we are talking no, about, he doesn't have them. No, he doesn't mm. have them. But the point I'm making here is that if that act was specific in terms of identifying who should hold power. Yeah, it, it left a gap for the president to also hold the portfolio of the Minister of Petroleum. It probably which was is in violation of the Constitution. E e exactly. E exactly. How? So the president holding an executive office. Is there any constitution? Is a violation of the constitution? No, 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 but you can't be president and hold an executive office at the same time. I don't think there's any law. No, but no, the point look at the constitution. No, but the point I'm making is the point I'm making is the check. if there were no plans if there were no plans to make the activities or the operations of the NNPC look very opaque. The laws <coughs> would have been very clear on the limits of the president's power. Okay. In terms of ho holding double portfolio. Emika, yeah. when, when, you, when you look at the petroleum um, PIB, and I don't know the position of the PIB in the National Assembly, I think it's time to start reviewing our laws with the um, um, lapses we've seen so far in yes. this NNPC Act. Yeah, you are right. Let me tell you, the NNPC thing looks like another Dasuki gate. And I'll tell you why. Remember, when the issue of Dasuki broke out, you know, when the Minister of Finance was confronted, about, oh, sorry about the Abacha loot, $322 million, how was it wired to Dasuki? Was he not supposed to have gone through a provision of the National Assembly through, it was, should have been approved by the National Assembly. But instead, the finance minister said, she was, the president asked her to just pass the money to Dasuki. No questions asked. So we now have another Dasuki gate brewing in this NNPC matter because the GMB of NNPC says that once the president says, go, that is go. Irrespective of what the law says. The same thing the finance minister said, Okonje Wala then. That because the president said, go, just do this. What the law said didn't matter. And we need to be very careful in this country because you see, it may be okay in this administration to do so to, to you know to bypass the laws and do what we like. But again, when you are accusing a pre a former administration of the same thing you are doing, where is the balance? Where is the difference? You know, how do we now hold our public officers to account? You are, talk, you are talking of the PIB. The Senate President uh, Bukola Saraki said, when they resume this time, you know, that this current um, session will make sure it passes the PIB. It but doesn't so even far, solve all the problems. That, that mm. is it. You see, when you talk about the laws, we have good laws in this country, but laws in themselves are not good unless the men and women vested with the operations of the law actually make them effective. Otherwise, mm -hmm. yes. we but may have a right. good a body of very good laws, mm -hmm. but so long as people don't feel that sense of responsibility Absolutely. to the nation, not individuals, to the nation, then we'll have problems. You've seen all kinds of things, all kinds of explanations people have been making, but the so question the is this. Uh, uh, according to you, shouldn't even 
uh, occupy the position of a uh, substantive minister. Of Why the, should the president even mean? occupy? Because the, the uh, conflict of interest will arise. It will always arise. The president is a politician. And in running a place like NNPC, you can't run it like a political party mm -hmm. where you dispense favors. You have to follow due process. Even if you're going to dispense favors, you must follow due process. Otherwise, mm -hmm. Will become a laughing stock Honestly. of the international community. You have we, Malaysia, we you have Brazil, we are, we are you have different countries stock. that have state run. Is this, uh, how, is this how they run petrol? Is this how they run? Is this how they run it? Is this how they run there? Is this how they run there? Mm -hmm. What it's, we it's, need to do is this. Like you said, Baru should stop digging. I don't even know why they are dragging the vice president to, into it. Because what Laolo Akonde tweeted didn't even answer the questions. He didn't answer the question how much was the contract, like yeah. Gide was talking about. What about the appointments? Then Baru listed a lot of things. Now, the story was that Baru went to Oshibajo, and Oshibajo directed him back to Kachiko. So what happened? At what point, hmm. at what point then, did Baru go back to Oshibajo and he signed it? You know, there are a lot of gaps hmm. missing yeah, there, there, in there, the story. There, there, there Every there time, gaps, there and gaps. I don't know why we want this matter to be resolved in the interest of our yes. nation. But some people who clearly are not thinking straight. No. Continue to go to Baru to tell Undu uh, Gamadu to be issuing out all sorts of uh, 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 statements that merely compound the situation. Yeah. That is the thing. Mm. Because I really don't know what they want to gain. You are doing a great disservice to your own administration. Because this is not the way to handle no. this matter. Mm. A quarrel yes. between two big people within in an administration. The president can call both men and give them the matching orders. And it ends there. Honestly. But you are using, you are, you are passing stuff uh, 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 to newspapers, and you think that, you, because the goal is, okay, let us see, let us destroy this man. And, okay. and, and, and that is one man. Day. Okay, I have, I have Abu Bakr from, calling us from Kano. Thank you, Abu Bakr. Yeah, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Mm. Uh, let me contribute a little to what you are discussing now. All right, Abu. Yeah, in the first place, uh, there is an act of insubordination and public service. May Kanti proved to be uh, so indisciplined to his senior, that is the uh, uh, oil minister. And then the minister had the power to query the, the GMD. And he has the power to stop that contract. And above all, I'm not blaming him because I will do respect to Mr. President. He has the support of Mr. President, that's why he has done what he did. Otherwise, boards are created to guide the operations of any organization. organization. Now, any violation, every, any violation to that, it means there is, there is a snag in it. And the snag is that Ketiku is weak. He can query the GMG, and then he can be able to stop that contract. Hmm. And unfortunately, Mr. President is watching the, the situation, because there is yeah. no point mm -hmm. that if you yeah. want real change, a realistic change to happen, you don't just fold your arms and see things are not going the, the right, the right I direction. Not talk. We, I cannot understand the confusion in this government. I'm sorry to say. Thank you, Thank you Abu you remember, <laughs> remember I said it here uh, uh, three days ago mm. when Mayor talked about the fact that oh, some people in the Niger Delta will not be happy about what is going on. And I told you, I said, my friends in Kano, mm. my friends in Kano are saying that on this matter, they do not like the way Kachiku is being treated. And I have, I have messages. Abu Bakr is another Kano. person who has called from Kano. From his accent and everything, you know no, that it's not from Niger Delta. Mm -hmm. What is bad is bad. Mm. One, reason, give it any one, reason, one reason I respect my, my people in northern Nigeria. Some of the best friends that I've made in my life are from the north because of sincerity. I have messages. I was talking about Aliu Yakase yesterday because Aliu Yakase is particularly disturbed about the way this thing is going. That mm. naturally, people should be able to say, no, Mekanti, what you have done is wrong. But we, we as a people, in every, in every situation, we want to put spins mm. on issues. Mm. And this matter is degenerating before our eyes. That's Some right. of us have been put to shame that, over this matter. Gets, mm. Mm. And that, we think it's such a nice gets. thing. Mm. We are encouraging that former it's NTA staff gets. every mm. day to be issuing a, a, a statement mm. and trying to diminish the office of of the minister. minister. Mm -hmm. that's it may be thing. Kachiku today, but tomorrow it could be someone else. Honestly. That is what, in building a nation, we can't decide which laws we want to obey. Mm -hmm. We can't decide when to follow due standards process. Standards. You cannot build a nation like that. And I've given examples. When I gave the example of Brazil with Petrobras, mm -hmm. people felt, uh, why Brazil? 
because we we all began almost at the same level Honestly. at the time of our independence we are at the same level with these people yes. they've all left us behind it is this kind of things that drag us back as a nation that, that ensures that nigeria's growth is stunted and the nigerian people can they know it the masses know that they are being deceived on this matter they know the president has to start talking. You cannot just keep quiet about nearly everything. Hmm. No. But it's I mean, our president... Yeah. I'm be saying he doesn't think, know anything I about I it. I think that's... Our hmm. president is not Mola uh, Mohammed of our, in Afghanistan that you don't get to hear, you don't get to see him. He has to talk when he needs to talk. That's because when he talks, he gives hope to people. Yes. He gives encouragement to people. Mm. He gives, I mean, it makes people feel mm. that, yes, their faith in the government is reinforced. Mm. Not to just keep quiet about matters like this. Sam, your final take I on this? Yeah, I think, I think Baba Gide has put it very yeah. blindly. Mm. What, what I think is that we have a president who has a very laid-back approach mm. and it calls to question, sadly, his um, competencies. I'm sorry I'm putting it that way. It's, it's too laid back. You know, it makes you want to query his administrative acumen. He has heaps of files waiting to be treated, yeah. and these files Mabakiela touch these files touch on the integrity, in March. In March. the reputation of this administration, and he's not doing anything about it. He seems to move on with the I mean, with the feeling that we have so much time. We don't have so much time in this country. Well, at all. A so country that, year, that you, can, you, can, you can't he celebrate. Told those, he told those judges it's, that it's, uh, it's sad. Yeah, I just started. After two and a half years. <laughs> For me, mm -hmm. President Buhari should drop the position of Minister of Petroleum. Yes. Let him give, let him make Kachikuti let him find, let him find, uh, let him let him find someone yeah. who teaches if he, can if do it. Not, if he feels not Kachikuti, he, he should look for someone else. I mean, the President Minister of Petroleum, Let's not have all these kind of messy things. You know, they make us look like he should find. He should also, he should also find the courage to activate the NCPP, NCPP Act. Uh, Act. Yes. yes. All right. It's there. Okay. After this break, federal government files charges against Senator Misao. The lawmaker accusing the Inspector General of Police of corruption. Stay with us. Welcome back. We just, um, before we move on, gentlemen, I think we don't have the, the, the last say yet on, we've not had our last say yet on this NNPC thing and recommendations now, Babajide. I want, uh, I want an NNPC that will be properly uh, run, properly administered, not the NNPC of hold. And I'm still seeing signs that the NNPC, despite the forms instituted, the reforms instituted, has not really changed. Because you have 90. 90 is supposed to regulate every, every extractive company in Nigeria. Mm. And 90 continues to complain yeah. that NNPC illegally withholds uh, uh, monies that it should pay into the federation account. Mm. 90 is talking about 21.7 billion dollars. dollars. Mm. NNPC is holding on to it. 90 is talking about another 376 billion naira mm. that NNPC has failed to remit. Remember, I said sometime in uh, October 2015 mm. that 90 complained just after President Buhari took well, over mm. that NNPC had so, continued the inglorious uh, uh, habit mm. of not remitting when it should remit. In October 2015, I remember saying that on this program. I was barely so six it months. has not. Yes, you see, the, when we talk about body language, the people get scared about the president. NNPC were not affected by any body the language body. because if <laughs> six was, months, it was still the yes, <laughs> body language did not affect them from the first day. So from the first day, in six months, they showed clearly, NIT showed clearly, that NNPC had failed to remit to the federation account. So if this is still happening then every Nigerian should be worried. Mm, Sam? Yeah, my, my recommendation would be this. Again, back to the, to the issue of constitutionalism. From what we have learned very recently, there are only two institutions vested with the competent authority to either award contracts mm. or sell assets if they need be. 
These two institutions are the Bureau of Public Procurement and the NCPP, the National Council. Now, the fact is that the law backing the establishment of these institutions was made more than 10 years ago, 2007. Mm. We want and we ask Mr. President, who is the leader of this very great nation, to initiate action towards activating the act, the PPP, the PPA MPA. Act, mm. Mm. you know, that takes the powers absolutely away from FEC and himself mm. to preside over a world of contracts. It's very clear, if this government is sincere, I want to prove that it is indeed very serious about fighting corruption. It shouldn't be difficult. It shouldn't be difficult to, to do. That about Omega. Yeah, they've said my mind. Basically, like I said, Buhari should step down from that role as Minister of Petroleum. Let him appoint a substantive minister. Yeah, and yeah. then again, the Minister of Finance should be made to play that role of chairman of that um, NCPP. 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 It is not. It is not. F you see, I don't believe in appointing people, you appoint people, and then you don't give them the necessary empowerment to do their job. You make, you make a mockery. You make the a mockery. Okay. The 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 All right. It is true that talk is cheap. And one lawmaker who has been relentless about talking in recent times is Senator Representative Bochi Central. That's Haman Misao. Senator Misao has been talking about the corruption in the Nigerian police and the need to probe the Inspector General of Police. Ibrahim Idris, but it seems he has finally talked himself into trouble. The federal government has filed two count, two different suits against him, bordering on corruption and injurious falsehood. Misao is accused of forging some documents, some of the documents he submitted to the Independent National Electoral Commission, one, INEC, and spread, spreading outright falsehood about a man who appears to be his sworn enemy. Inspector General of Police Ibrahim Idris, what is wrong with the Eighth Senate? Babajide, we, on two occasions that we've had to discuss um, um, this particular um, topic, and we challenge the Inspector General of Police, we challenge um, the Inspector General of Police saying that the authority must look into this allegation that were made and everything. At the same time, when we saw the flow of events, when we saw the figures and everything that this person was calling, just as recent as yesterday, we said, look, he's a senator of the Federal Republic. He who alleges must prove. Mm -hmm. So alleging that the Inspector General of Police gets gratification to a tune of 120 billion naira every, yeah. every year. That means um, 10, 10 billion, 10, a, 10 billion a, month. A, a month. So at least you must name names well, and add this to that. Mm -hmm. So, Babajide, what informed this move by the federal government? No, the, the, you know, because he has refused to come forward with evidence, we challenge him here, and I'll be the first to, to support him if he can come up with evidence. We know there is corruption in the police. We know IG state bribes. Nobody, everyone knows that. If you don't know that, Commissioners, there's, everybody. There's, there's hardly anything you know about our country. <laughs> You know, commissioners, you know, down to the DPO, most junior sorry, person in the police. DPO. It's a culture. <laughs> Bribe taking is a culture in the police. A culture that we cannot vitiate in our generation. I'm not cursing our country, but I know that, look, we've, we've not even done enough to discourage the police from taking bribes. You transfer a policeman to a new state, mm. you don't give him relocation, uh, allowance, relocation allowance, and you don't want him to take bribe. Mm. You are owing, as we discovered, mm. despite the attempt of the police postman to put a spin mm. on the story, mm -hmm. we discovered that some policemen were being owed. So mm. even someone called in to mm. confirm it mm -hmm. in Kaduna and a few states, you know, two months salary. You don't want them to take bribes. They will take bribes. Even mm. put a gun to their neck, they will take bribes. <laughs> you can't stop that. Mm. So. But the IG and other people, already we've heard that once you become an IG, you are a billionaire already. Yeah. Nobody. Given. Yes. Nobody, <laughs> because people will, even if you don't demand for bribe, no, there are people demand. who will the, bring it to you, bring it to your door. They won't even call it bribe. No, 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 no. Just, just want to just thank you. Want to show it will be, uh, 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 be too tempting to resist. Yes. Ah. You know? <laughs> now, but to say that 
every month, Idris gets 10 billion. Idris pockets 10 billion from bribes, and that in a year, 120 billion. billion. The first thing I will ask is, where does he keep this money? Because 120 billion is a lot of money. Even Dangote, I doubt if he has 120 billion cash in this country. When he wants to do it, he goes through the banks, consortium of banks helping him with projects and all that. Money, you, we can't just be throwing money around like that. And mm -hmm. if Senator Miso thinks that, okay, if he's very confident that he has cast iron evidence, mm -hmm. then he should be able to provide it. I would have loved the situation in which, as he continued to address the press, he gave them facts that they can use to so, do so, so Nigeria limited. It's not, it's not. So, so, so organization. You see, when you, when someone, when someone comes up with a very damaging allegation against you, for the whole of that week, you may find it difficult to sleep. Hmm. Or people will call you, he has destroyed your name. Hmm. Almost to the point that you can't repair the damage. So now they are saying, okay, since you've gone ahead to do this, they are taking you to court. In court, you'll be able to defend yourself. Provide Although I quarrel with, uh, uh, with the charge of forgery and all that after mm. the police service commission mm. had That's said that this man uh, properly, that means uh, they do not want to just the shame. The shame of, uh, <laughs> of the police having to eat their uh, words is what they find it difficult to live with. So they've, called, they've, they've, they've now added forgery to the charge. Yes, injurious, uh, uh, you, you can accuse him of inciting, you can accuse mm. him of lying against mm. the man mm. until the comes up of But to say that, that accuse him of forgery, when the police service commission has cleared him, then no, the, that, that will not fly. That, 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 that don't fly at all. Yes, you, you asked um, what is wrong with the 8th Senate. Mm. And um, I'm sure if any serious aggregation is um, done, asking people to state what they think of the 8th Senate, uh, the, the response you're likely to get, which is, like, which is going to be in the majority, is that it's been very disappointing. Um, Misao is just one out of the many. Was the government right to go to court? Very appropriate, because we have to continue to test our system. So it is good that the government has gone to court, and we trust that the courts will be efficient enough and timely to, you know, to deal with this matter. As for the 8th Senate, one is very disappointed that they are usually in a hurry to protect their own. Mm. Yes, because they said they will continue the probe yes. of the IG. Yes, mm. interestingly, of this. interestingly the, the, the Senate uh, chairman who is in charge of uh, ethics, privileges, and petition mm. happens to be the one representing my, my senatorial district. Mm. And I, I feel very sorry for him that he, he had to come out to say all that. It simply means that we don't even respect our courts. I mean, if the matter is before the courts, why would they want to go ahead you know, to deal with the matter. And their own law, their own rules. Yes. Say they Says that they should, they should not. The court. So you, you wonder why they are insisting on doing that if the objective is not to protect Bissau, who seems to have talked himself into trouble. <laughs> so let the court deal with this matter. We can only appeal that the matter should be quickly dispensed with. And everybody who has, anyone who has uh, fallen short of, of the law should be made to face the necessary sanctions. Omega. Yes, uh, well, I don't think that case will go anywhere. It's just a distraction. It's just a way, it's just part of the political game, the power play mm -hmm. we see among our leaders in Nigeria. It's just, you know, to take attention away from the reality. Let me tell you, I don't know about the figure, whether it's 10 billion or 120 billion, but let me tell you the truth. There are a lot of companies, foreigners, Chinese, and all kinds of people who enjoy police protection directly from the office of the IG. So let's not even pretend that such doesn't exist. How the terms are, how those policemen are deployed, I don't know. But that they are deployed directly. And we're not controversing that fact. Yes, so. uh, but whether money, you know, whether money is paid and all that, well, I don't know. But I do know that special squads, that policemen attached to special squads of states actually get special allowances. Yes. So maybe Norma. <coughs> maybe Mr. Mr. put but everything to I'm just saying maybe and 10 billion. maybe he put everything together. I'm just saying maybe maybe he put yeah, everything well, together. Is a lot yeah. No, I'm no well maybe he put everything together. That okay, this is all that comes. But how much <coughs> goes to one person? That's why I said I don't know. But for me, I feel <coughs> that if it's the issue of defamation of character, 
what is the business of the AGF? With it? Is it that the, pol the IG of police cannot sue in his capacity as an individual? After all, <coughs> I think maybe you were in the news then when Obasanjo took the news to court over, was it Koja or so? In his personal capacity, even though he enjoys immunity and all of that. So what I'm saying is that... It's his wife. Rather. Yeah, his wife, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, how can the AGF now be using government resources against a citizen of Nigeria? So does it mean that, okay, whenever an issue comes up, okay, let's say a newspaper, <coughs> a newspaper, for instance, publishes a report, you run to court, and then the newspaper cannot touch it. You see, our mm -hmm. uh, public officers should start making a mockery of the judicial system. All right, so let me quickly take this break. When we come back, we reach home stretch. You're still journalist hangouts. <music> Moving on now, Nigerians living in Goza, Brown State, are not only living in poverty and fears, they are helpless. Boko Haram has ravaged their communities for years and they have suffered terrible physical, emotional and economic losses. They have endured the painful waits for help and when the needed help started coming in, they were beginning to rebuild their lives. Boko Haram struck again. Reports say non-governmental organizations working with them to, uh, have left. When will Goza become a livable city again? Babajide, it's a good news uh, you know, uh, that people that have left um, Goza, they came and uh, those NGOs started helping to rebuild their life and everything. So what we've been encouraging uh, people to go back home and everything, most of them cannot leave the IDPs because there's no home to go back to. But the safety of lives and properties in all these areas still remain um, a, a big task. Yes. For the federal government. Yes. Um, what we have is a piece of the graveyard. Nobody, if you go to the uh, motor parks in um, Borno State and you say you want to go to Chibok or you want to go to Goza, you want to go to Bama, people will look at you like you're, you're, you're from mad. But are you okay? Because the only way people can go to go to those places is under heavy military escort. Heavy. Transporters are not on their own going to those areas. You can't. So there's no free trade, free movement. Of we've, de we've decimated Boko Haram. The Air Force has taken out their big equipment. No more ammo tanks and all that. Now the, you should call They've you literally you. destroyed all their gun trucks, apart from the gun trucks that they stole when they attacked our soldiers who were going to Madumeri with the oil uh, people who were doing oil prospecting mm -hmm. in the Chad Basin. They no longer have gun trucks, but they still have their light equipment, light firearms, and they are hiding on trees and inside the bushes. In Goza, for example, Boko Haram fighters are on top of the Goza hills, always watching what is going on downstairs, uh, down, down there. Mm -hmm. If you move like one kilometer out of Goza, you say you want to go and farm, they will kill you. So people can't return to their homes. And that's what those caregivers have been saying that look, even in communities that you've chased Boko Haram away from, hmm. people can't go home because those, the, the, those, those places are not safe. They are still killing people. Hmm. A lot of the killings don't get reported. Hmm. So until we get to that situation that people can say, okay, we are free. And I don't think what happened the day before yesterday in Goza will really uh, encourage people to go home. Because if Boko Haram can come within whiskers of Goza and engage the Nigerian army in a firefight for three hours, hmm. then something is wrong. That means these guys are still active, which is the point that one is making. They are still active. How do we make those communities safe for people to go back? When the governor of Bono State, remember when he said he was going to close IDPs in April, mm. I mean May this year, mm. I said he was joking. <laughs> so how do you do it? Nobody wants to go home. Mm. Beyond the fact that those homes have been destroyed, they don't have roofs over their heads anymore, those communities are not safe. You'll be killed. 
and nobody wants to be killed. People have learned lessons. There is a town called Uba along the boundary yes. between uh, Adamawa and, uh, and uh, uh, Borno mm -hmm. State. The people returned home. Then these guys came and slaughtered people. Mm. So those who returned home, they regretted it. Mm. You can't go to your farm. You can see rains now, mm. but you cannot go and farm mm. because they will come and kill you right uh, on your farm. So it's a terrible thing. Sometimes they don't even use guns. They just quietly kill, slaughter people. Look at what they did on, 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 uh, in Baga. Fishermen, about 30, I think 27 or so fishermen, they just slaughtered them and put them in their boats and said, okay, you that you are left, take their uh, they corpses they back home they so they that they this? will know that we are still active. So it's, it's, it, this is the, a very terrible mm. situation. I mm. just hope that somehow we can find a way to, 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 to solve this problem. Sam, what do you make of this situation? Yeah, uh, when they spoke, he talked about um, how you know, uh, the government you know, can deal with this matter. Sadly, the military is already stretched. Stretched. That's what makes it really very sad. But of greater concern, you know, to those of us who are watching very keenly, is that the number of the number of uh, the dead keeps rising. Mm -hmm. In fact, the facts that I gleaned, you know, um, while preparing for this program, suggest that between January and today, more than 200 persons, you know, have been killed, and that's pretty very unfortunate. But the war has not been totally won, and that is very, very clear. Um, it's, it's good to appreciate the role of the military, but the fact of the matter, like Jide has um, you know, um, captured, is that we still have a very terrible yeah, situation on, to our, rest on our hands. I, I had access to a document that was put out by S.K. Usman, the, the military spokesman, and contrary to what you said, there were pictures of I'm a personal carrier that was used by this guy's day for yesterday. SK Boko, Spans, no? Yeah, shared it, shared it on his um, on his Facebook wall. So maybe they, maybe and like you said, like, acquired new yeah, no, no, no. Like you said, it could be one of those that was seized from the military when you know during the last attack. So this group remains potent. True, they've been largely decimated, but the fact mm. is that government can, cannot fold its arms. They can. The only thing that needs to be done is that mm. the government will have to continue to fight mm. in America, make sure that they to the military. Well, it's unfortunate that this war has continued. Uh, the other, uh, was it yesterday, the military was saying that there's no ISIS operating in Nigeria. But Reuters, some days ago, talked about a new group, an ISIS-backed group operating in the Sahel, you know. So we need to really broaden our military engagement. I don't know how we're going to do it, but something a new, some new strategies need to be brought up. Otherwise, these people will continue to stretch our military, stretch our people, and I can't just imagine what will happen there. But really, I sympathize with the people in those areas. It's really traumatic. A war that has gone on for how many years, and there's no hope in sight. It's really, it's something it's terrible. Expensive. And, it's, and it's, it's also draining the Nigerian economy. Draining, Let's yes. not forget mm. about the warheads yes. that the Air Force is using, the military, yeah, okay. and then well, the fact that people cannot contribute to the economic for, development yeah. of the nation. It's that really, part of the country? It's something, yeah. that, it's something that really hurts me. I don't know how the solution will The Air Force spends all the the best. Air, close to 400 million every month of fueling, just fueling. We are not talking about the bombs that they use. Some of those bombs the cost about 12,000 euros. Hmm. Just know? one? Just one. Just one. 12,000 euros. And then imagine yes. how much And they, every day we are bombing them. We are pounding. We are bombing them every day. Day and night. In the night for hours we are bombing them. And it's draining the economy. So it's draining the economy oh, seriously. 12,000 euros. That, that, so if, if you are talking about just, uh, and each of those, like the, like the, um, um, the Alpha, fight, jets. Fight, Alpha Jets, for example, they carry 250 pound bombs. Two each and there are dozens of sorties mm. you know dozens of sorties so <laughs> you can imagine how many bombs they, they drop in a day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, how much that i want to thank you emeka madunagu thank you very for much. being part of this show and i want to thank you sam Ibemere, for being part of the pleasure. show and my colleague babajide kolade otitoju and that's it on journalist hangout join us tomorrow for another interesting episode of the program watch the repeat broadcast tonight at 11 on all our platforms you can see it's displayed there, the six, about six of them. You can also watch journalists hang out on 
YouTube. That's youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. Our feedback channel is journalist hangouts at tvcnews.tv. I'm Ayodili Uzubaku. God bless Nigeria. Bye for now. <laughs>